Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whatever time it is where you are. Listen, this is Ruel Barksdale, and I am hosting our podcast, Walking Through the Book of Genesis. I do not own the rights to this music, but the, the words are so beautiful. I love you, Lord, today. Why? Because you cared for me in such a special way. I'll praise you. I'll lift you up. I'll magnify your name. That's why my heart is filled with praise. Listen, get, get some pencil, get paper, get pen, get your Bible, get your iPad, your iPod, wherever your Bible is held. And we will walk through the book of Genesis today, focusing on the 26th chapter. This will probably be a two-part lesson on the 26th chapter because there's some things I want to d drill a little bit deeper into. So uh, get ready, call a friend, call an enemy, and we'll walk through this book together. I'll see you in a second. Have you ever wondered why some things seem to be generational? You know, the 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 exercises or the the experiences of the the father and the mother seem to follow the experiences of the the son and the daughter and and it just seems like uh, some people would call it a generational curse and uh, you experience some of the same things that your parents experienced. Why is that? I mean, is there something in our DNA that causes us to uh, fall in the same ways that our mother and father? Is there, is there something in, in our heredity that, that makes us do the same um, sin or the faults and the failure, experience the same faults and the failures of of our parents what what is that today we're going to see Isaac following the mistakes of Abraham why is that we'll try to get some insight into that and then we we may take two weeks for uh, this chapter but Isaac is now uh, going to be the focus of our study Abraham is dead Sarah is dead, but the promise is still alive. Mm. And you, you may be in a situation where, where your, your, your parents are gone. Your uncles, your aunts, your cousins, you, you, you may be the leader of your family now. But if God gave a promise to your ancestors, that promise is still yours. If he, if he told your ancestors, and he did, that you would be the head and not the tail. If he told your ancestors, and he did, that you would be the lender and not the borrower. Hold on to, as a matter of fact, every promise that God gave his chosen people in the Old Testament, I want you to hold on to that promise as being yours. Because you, my friends, the church of the New Testament are God's chosen people. And, and while we may experience some of the same faults, failures, and flaws of our ancestors, God is yet faithful. And we're going to see that even though Isaac has some of the faults, failures, and flaws of Abraham, some of the same doubts, some of the same shortgivings, God is still faithful. And, and there's, there's one more thing I want to say before we get into the 26th chapter. Oftentimes, we judge each other by our faults, our failures, our flaws, by the things that we don't do well, by the, by the things that we mess up in. Somebody said that the army of the Lord is the only army that shoots its wounded. Thank God that he judges the heart. Because Abraham wasn't perfect. Noah wasn't perfect. And we're going to see that Isaac is not perfect. And yet God's faithfulness, God's grace, and God's mercy remain. Let's go to the 26th chapter. Now there was a famine in the land besides the earlier famine of Abraham's time. And Isaac went to Abimelech, king of the Philistines, to Gerar. The Lord appeared to Isaac and said, Do not go down to Egypt. Live in the land where I tell you to live. Stay in this land for a while, and I will be with you, and will bless you, for to you and your descendants I will give all these lands. 
and will confirm the oath I swore to your father Abraham. How many of you know that in the midst of a famine, in the midst of a depression, in the, in the midst of inflation, of, in the midst of joblessness, God is still faithful. Your blessings aren't dependent on the economy. Your blessings aren't depending on how well you, the country is doing, the, the county is doing, the city is doing, your, your company is doing. That's not where your blessings stem from, my brother, my sister. Your blessings stem from the promises of God. And his promises are true no matter what the economy is doing. Um, I Let's go to verse Let's, let's stay, stay in this land for a while and I will be with you and will bless you. In the midst of the famine, I will bless you. In the midst of homelessness, I'll bless you. In the midst of people wondering where they're going to get their next meal from, I will bless you. Stay in the land. I, I know there's trouble. Stay in the land. I know it doesn't seem like, like things are going the way you would expect them to go. Stay in the land. I will bless you. I will be with you. And will bless you for to you and your descendants. I will give all these lands and will confirm the oath that I swore to your father Abraham. I didn't give you the oath. I, I didn't tell you what I was going to do originally. I told your father. But because I told your father, I've got to bless you. You you need to do an inventory of your of your father and your mother and your and your grandparents. What has God told them? That you should be carrying out. What, what has God promised them that you will be the recipient of? I will make your descendants as numerous as the stars in the sky, and will give them to to all, give them all these lands. And through your offspring, all nations of the earth will be blessed, because Abraham obeyed me. This isn't about you, Isaac. You, you are the recipient of the blessings of a conversation, of a relationship between me and your daddy. That's why it's so important for us to be the types of parents that our children can be blessed through. At one point, you will be the ancestors. Act accordingly. Mm. I will give you all these lands through, through your offspring. All nations of the earth will be blessed. Because Abraham obeyed me and kept my requirements. What did he keep? Circumcision? What did he keep? I'm going, I'm going to slay my, I'm going to sacrifice my son Isaac, the, the only son, my only begotten son, the son that I've waited for, the son of promise. Lord, you gave him to me and if you need him, I'm going to give him back to you. Abraham wasn't faultless, but Abraham had faith in the God that he served. You, my brother, I, my sister, are not faultless. But can we believe in the promises of God? Can we believe that he will do what he said he would do in the midst of famine, in the midst of pestilence, in the midst of inflation, in the midst of depression? Will he? Yes, he will. Because Abraham obeyed me and kept my requirements, my commands, my decrees, and my laws. So Isaac Stayed where God told him to stay. I'm going to stay right here, Lord. I know there's, I know there's trouble here. I, I know there's a famine, but you told me to stay. I'm going to stay. When the men of that place asked him about his wife, he said, she is my sister. Here we go. You remember the story of Abraham and Sarah. He was afraid that if the men knew that, that Sarah was his wife, they'd kill him to get to her because she was beautiful. Isaac, Rebecca, same situation. When the men of the place asked him about his wife, he said, now, now, is this in his DNA? No, no, no. I believe, and, and, and we can discuss this, but I believe that we learn from our experience, our environment, and our exposure. I believe that he saw the dealings of Abraham. He saw the way Abraham moved and shaked. He saw the way Abraham wasn't always totally honest. And, and Isaac, you know, well, maybe this is what I'm supposed to do. He had a choice. His choice wasn't good because he was afraid to say she is my wife. He thought the men of this place might kill me 
on account of Rebecca because she was now. This is one thing too. They they had a they had a, a situation where they were choosing beautiful women. I, I guess, oh Lord, and 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 they they were afraid of that. These men gonna kill me. When Isaac had been there a long time, Abimelech, king of the Philistines, looked down from a window and saw Isaac caressing his wife, Rebekah. So Abimelech summoned Isaac and said, She is really your wife. Why did you say she is my sister? Isaac answered him, Because I thought I might lose my life on account of her. Then Abimelech said, What is this you have done to us? One of the men might have slept with your wife, and you would have brought guilt upon her. Remember, that's the same conversation that, that Abraham had had with the leaders before. And remember, Abimelech is a title, not a name. We've heard this conversation before. Then Abimelech said, what is this you have done to us? One of the men might have slept with your, your wife, and you would have brought guilt upon us. So Abimelech gave orders to all the people, anyone who molests this man or his wife shall surely be put to death. Look at God in the midst of Isaac's foolishness. God's blessings are still there. Why? Because Abel, he just told Isaac. See, see, th this is the deal. You can't, because God speaks to you audibly, you can't, because God's anointing is on you, you can't, because God has given you a promise, a blessing to, to magnify. You can't, you can't get in your head that I can do anything. I, I'm perfect. I'm, I'm the man. I'm the woman. Stop it. Pride cometh before a fall. Peter was the leader before he denied Christ. Peter was the man. Peter was the leader of all 12. So don't think because you're the bishop, you're the apostle, you're the pastor, you're the Sunday school teacher, you're the head usher, you're the, you're the choir director that, got, that Satan doesn't want you, that you can't fall, that you can't make a mistake. You can and you will. But God's grace. Listen to what God does in the midst of Isaac's foolishness. So Abimelech gave orders to all the people, anyone who molests this man or his wife shall surely be put to death. Isaac planted crops in that land and the same year reaped a hundredfold because the Lord, why? Because the Lord blessed him. The man became rich. Now he was already rich because Abraham gave him everything he had and Abraham was rich. And if you are blessed to have an inheritance, don't get lazy. Don't bury your wealth and just use it all. No, no, no. Sustainability means you can live your life so that those that follow you can live theirs. Isaac was a worker. With all of his riches, with all of his blessings, with all that Abraham, he, he was a worker. So, so, so Isaac planted crops in the land. And the same year reaped a hundredfold because the Lord blessed him. The man became rich and his wealth continued to grow until he became very wealthy. I mean, he was Bill Gates. He was he was um, he was wealthy. I mean, he, he was he was wealthy. He was Tesla wealthy. Um, the man became rich and, his, and, and continued to grow until he became very wealthy. He had so many flocks and herds and servants that the Philistines envied him. You know, envy is a bad thing. Envy is a bad thing. Sometimes people will hate you, not because you've done anything to him, but because God has blessed you. Sometimes people will hate you because they don't have what you have. Sometimes people will hate you because God's hands are, are on your life. Envy is a terrible thing. My brother, my sister, when you are envious of somebody, check yourself. Check yourself. It's, it's, it's a terrible thing to mess with God's anointed. The man became rich and very wealthy. He had so many flocks and servants that the Philistines envied him. So all the wells that his father's servants had dug in the time of his father Abraham, the Philistines stopped them filling them with earth why would you do that why would you do that why would you hate to see God's anointed walk in his anointing that's an evil thing then Abimelech said to Isaac move away from us you have become too powerful for us so Isaac moved he 
he moved away from there and encamped in the valley of Gerar and settled there. Isaac reopened the wells that had been dug in the time of his... He's a worker. He sees what needs to be done. He sees that this is an evil thing, but I'm not going to sit down and cry and moan because somebody did something bad to me. I know that God's hands are, of a blessing are upon me. I'm going to do what needs to... Isaac's servants dug in the valley um, and discovered as, as a well of fresh water there. But the herdsmen of Gerar quarreled with Isaac her, herdsmen. Everywhere he goes, there's trouble. Everywhere he goes, there's strife. So the herdsmen of Gerar quarreled with Isaac's herdsmen and, and, and said that the water is ours. So he named the well Isaac because they disputed with him. Then they dug another well, but they quarreled over that one also. So he named it Sitna. He moved on from there and dug another well, and no one quarreled over it. He named it Rehoboth, saying, Now the Lord has given us room, and we will flourish in the land. If God's anointing, if God's promises on your life, keep digging. You will have people come against you. Keep digging. Things won't always go your way. Keep digging. Oh, from there he went to Beersheba. That night the Lord appeared to him and said, I am the God of your father Abraham. Do not be afraid, for I am with you. I will bless you and will increase the number of your descendants. For the sake of my servant Abraham. Not here we go again. It's it's about your daddy. I pray to God that my children will be blessed because of the relationship that I have with God. I pray to God that your children and your grandchildren and your grandchildren's children will be blessed because of the relationship, because of what you did, because of the way you walked with God. Isaac built an altar there and called on the name of the Lord. There he pitched his tent, and there his servants dug a well. Meanwhile, Abimelech had come to, f come to him from Gerar with Ahusa, Ahusath, his personal advisor, and Fico, the commander of his forces. Isaac asked them, Why have you come to me since you were hostile to me and sent me away? They answered, We saw clearly that the Lord was with you. See, when you do what God tells you to do, your enemy will have to recognize that there's, there's something special about this person. There's something different about this person. Don't, don't focus on your faults. Build your faith. Don't focus on your problems. Focus on the promise. Meanwhile, uh, they answered, we saw clearly that the Lord was with you. So we said, there ought to be a sworn agreement between us. Between us and you, let us make a treaty with you that you will do us no harm. See, now, see, see, now they, they, they scared a little bit. They recognize that, that there's something different about this person. There's, God is with him. Do you not? Do, sometimes we are so desirous of having relationships with the powerful. But when God is on your side, the powerful will want to have, rela mm, will want to have relationships with you. Let, let us make a treaty with you that you will do us no harm, just as we did not molest you, 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 you but always treated you well and, and sent you away in peace, and now you are blessed by God. He was always blessed by God. Don't wait for other people to see your blessings before you understand that you're blessed by God. Don't wait for other people to co-sign your anointing before you understand that God's hand of anointing is on you. Don't wait for other people to say, God is good. Hmm. Isaac then made a feast for them. Look at this. Prepares a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Isaac then made a feast for them, and they ate and drank. Early the next morning, the men swore an oath to each other. Then Isaac sent them on their way, and they left him in peace. That day, Isaac's servants came and told him about the well they had dug. They said, we found water. He called it Sh Shabbat. And to this day, the name of the town has been Beersheba. When Esau was 40 years old, he married Judith, daughter of Beri, Beri and Hittite, and also Basemath, 
daughter of Elon the Hittite. They were a source of grief to Isaac and Rebekah. Who we're going to, if we got through that, I didn't know whether we'd be able to get through this chapter in one setting. Listen, next week we'll look at chapter 27 and we will look at Isaac's sons. And the drama continues, family matters. Today we'll look at this as the sins of the father. Next week we'll look at family matters. Listen, I, I love you so much. And I thank you for walking through the book of Genesis with me. Tell a friend, tell an enemy about how good God is and our walk. And listen, by the time the next chapter is over, you and your enemy might be friends. Keep walking. Keep digging. Keep believing. God is with you. Till next week. Bye-bye.